Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're doing the all too highly requested winter sewing video. And in this video, we're gonna be going into the details of winter sewing, not so much a how to. If you want a free printable worksheet that you can print out, be sure to check out gardeningincanada.net. There's also a blog post that goes into a ton more detail about this topic. Let's just get right into it. So I've never winter sewn, full disclosure. Um, I've always thought it was a big investment for little return. And the reason for that is because the container size and the amount of plants you can get. I mean, you really have to preemptively think about winter sowing if you are going to do this method. Now, I have watched a ton of videos. I've read a ton of blogs on this and the best method or the method that seems to work the best is when you have one plant per jug. So you would seed or sow, you know, five, six plants, and then you would trim back everything except for one, leaving one plant per jug. And Garden Answers actually did this in her video. The other method would be to use the winter sowing as a way to skyrocket or just germinate faster if you don't have proper access to lighting. So you would sow a bunch of seeds and then you would actually separate them from each other and transplant them into containers or into the garden, whatever the case is, whatever time period you're working on. And that method works if you're just waiting for it to warm up enough that you can utilize your outdoor greenhouse. Now the method I'm using is the outdoor greenhouse method because I have so, I have a lot of greenhouse space now because I'm actually doing a matchy dome greenhouse this year. Um, so I have that one, I have my old one that I had before, and then I have another mini one that I also have, which is an older one as well. So I have a ton of greenhouse space, so that's not of concern to me. Now, if you didn't have greenhouse space and you don't have indoor lighting, then you may want to save up those milk jugs and do one plant per milk jug. And the reason for the milk jug method is because if you sit down and think about it, the idea of winter sowing is to be able to have plants started outside late earlier in the season and therefore not having to rely on an indoor setting and you need something that is taller in order to make this work so plastic containers while they will work outdoors for germinating the plants it's not a long-term sustainable way of doing the winter sowing method so you have to use milk jugs, maybe a pop bottle, for example, like a two liter pop bottle, just something that's gonna give you a little bit of height so that your plants can thrive and survive inside of that little mini greenhouse for a bit more time. Now, winter sowing is different than cold frame gardening. Those two should not get mixed up and they also should not be interchanged. So for a uh, winter sowing method, you have a bottom to the container and the bottom serves a purpose. The first purpose being that the roots don't connect with the soil, which is either frozen still or maybe starting to thaw. This allows you the opportunity to still transplant or replant those plants elsewhere in the garden. It's not in situ. With cold frame gardening, while you can start seeds outside with cold frame gardening or you can transplant into cold frames, that is meant to stay there for the rest of the season. So winter sowing allows you to move your containers and generally you can place them anywhere. So that is the other benefit. You, when you're able to move the winter sown containers around, this yields the opportunity to either capture more sun, maybe capture less sun or bring it inside altogether. If you live in Canada, if you live in the Northern US, you know that weather can change on a dime. If you are in Alberta, for example, maybe some portions of Saskatchewan, you are all too familiar with Chinooks and how it will be spring temperatures for two weeks, and then you'll be plunged back into a deep freeze for 
who knows how long. So winter sowing allows you to mitigate this when possible. This also allows you to put plants in areas that you typically wouldn't have them. So for me, for my winter sowing project, I put mine in a south facing area that's going to get a ton of sun all day but I even went one step further and I put my winter sown containers underneath my eaves trough so the purpose for that if you didn't know eaves troughs they have all those little holes in it those holes are to allow for both moisture and heat to escape the roof so we don't end up with moldy roofs and therefore there is an area around the east trough where you can capture some heat, which will keep that ambient temperature just a bit higher than surrounding areas. And this is actually a trick I use on nights where it's supposed to get frosty um, in the beginning of the season or later in the season. If something's in a container and it's movable, it's going in on the east trough because that can save your plants. We know our placement for winter sown containers. We know the type of container that we wanna use. What type of soil are we gonna use? Soil type, you're going to want to just go with a regular potting soil mix. The reason being is you want something light and fluffy. Topsoil or ground soil isn't going to work in this case. It's much too heavy. You also, depending on where you are and what the plant is, you may want to add holes to the bottom of your winter sown containers. I personally didn't add the holes to the bottom, mostly because I'm pretty confident that it's not going to stay warm out and I just I I either I'm gonna have one of two things happen it's either gonna get really really cold or it's either gonna get really really hot so I just want to wait and see what happens I didn't put any holes in the bottom of mine now this is my life I love plants it's an everyday hobby so I will be checking on them every single day meaning I can water just a tiny little bit and then come back and water again. So I don't need that drainage. Now, if you are a forgetful parent, uh, plant parent, or if you aren't super into plants, then maybe consider putting those holes in the bottom because it's gonna make your life a little bit easier and you're not gonna have to pivot or change anything. So add some holes if you're concerned that you won't be able to attend to them as often. The second thing that you may want to do for your potting soil is actually add a heat sink to the container. So I'm doing an experiment with my containers. I'm doing basil for one and I'm doing basil for another. The only difference, they're both Zappa brand uh, basil seeds and the one has no rocks and one has rocks and the rocks are going to be my heat sink. So the theory is that the sun will solarize the rock, heat it up during the day, the rock, because it has a very high density, will hold on to that heat and slowly release that ambiently inside of that container throughout the night, which obviously is going to keep that temperature up and fingers crossed may cause germination to happen sooner and for the seedlings to thrive and survive a bit better. If you choose to use rocks as a heat sink mechanism, then place your rocks in situ before you actually use your seeds. So after you have your rocks in place, your soils in place, then put your seeds on the top and then sprinkle the surface with a little bit more potting soil, give it a water and you're done. This brings me into my next tip for winter sowing in cold climates especially. Pick seeds that have been grown in Canada prior to. So a Canadian seed company is going to have better germination rates in colder climates than something out of the US. And this is simply because of genetics and how the world works. The flowers and the seeds that are produced in cold climates have a tendency to genetically be better in cooler areas or cooler zones. So if you are getting your seeds from a Canadian company such as Zappa Seeds, I will leave a link down below for that, you're going to have a higher rate of germination. And not only that, you're gonna have a higher survival rate in the cooler nights if it happens. So Zappa is uh, the one that I'm an affiliate with, so you can check out them, but there are so many other ones out there. There is Early's, um, there's Mackenzie's seeds. I don't know if those are grown in Canada. Let me know in the comments down below if you know that they are. There's T and T. There is there's just there's so many. Just Google it and make sure you get 
plants and seeds that were grown or harvested within Canada or within Canadian climates. Trust me, this is a, a statement that goes unnoticed normally, but I promise you it'll make a difference. The next hack is actually putting the cap on the top of your container at night. During the day, it is going to get very warm inside the container and honestly, it may get to the levels that the plant is unable to survive in. So there may be times where you actually have to take the top off altogether, especially as the season goes on. But you should always, during the day, take the pink cap off your milk jug or off your pop bottle. The reason for this is because you can literally bake your plants inside. However, as the sun starts to go down, we don't have the heat from the sun anymore. And because hot air rises, the hot air is going to leave that container until the inside of the container is the same temperature as the outside of the container. The best way to solve this issue is actually to put the cap back on top. And this will allow for some of that heat to be preserved ambiently inside of the container. So I'm in zone three, as many of you already know, and that would be a USDA zone four. I have started my winter sown seeds today. It is St. Patrick's Day and they are outside. Now you could have started them early or earlier and place them outside and then leave it and forget it and check it over time. There's nothing wrong with that. You can't actually freeze seedlings. In a huge number of cases, the seedlings actually enjoy a little bit of vernalization. Typically, people who uh, sell seeds or breed seeds will do the vernalization for you in house, and what you get is just already ready to be planted. However, it's, you can't freeze a seed. They are completely fine in outdoor conditions for the most part. There are some exceptions to that rule, but they will be totally fine. So if I would have planted these in January, say, put them outside, left them and forgot about them until this weekend and I went to go check them, there's nothing wrong with that. The one thing I will warn against is if you are in that Chinook area or if you're in an area where you all of a sudden get a heat wave and there's a ton of heat, that will cause germination. And if it's over a week, you can almost expect some seedlings. Now, if you get thrusted back into an absolute deep freeze, this is where the issue comes because seedlings grown outside while they are hardier and they are more cold tolerant just because they are down in the trenches when it comes to growing up, they can't survive extreme cold. So keep that in mind if you start these early and you get germination really early, you may have to bring them inside, especially if you're getting into a real cold snap for the next two, three days. If you have germination, you don't wanna worry about it. Which leads me into my last and final point. I'm looking at winter sowing from the benefit of being able to have plants that don't need to be hardened off for as long or if at all. And the reason for that is because they are exposed to varying temperatures. They will very early on be exposed to the wind and the sun because the top will have to come off, especially when we start getting to 10, 15 degree days, the tops of that container will be coming off. They'll be exposed fully to all the light. Um, so you will end up with hardier plants and this may mean better results throughout the entire growing season. You won't run into two, three weeks of transplant shock where the plant is unable to do anything, is kind of sitting like a lame duck that you can see sometimes when you transplant outdoors. So there is that benefit. I just don't know on a scale if I'm gonna see any benefit if I don't have enough milk jugs. Like what is the, the number of milk jugs I need to make this successful and make it worth my time, if that makes sense. But I will keep you guys posted. If you guys want more details on my journey in winter sewing, be sure to follow me on Instagram or just follow gardeningincanada.net. You will be able to find a ton of details there. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below if you winter sew and what containers you use. All I, my mind can think of is milk jugs and two liter pop bottles, but there may be other containers out there as well. I'm thinking like Rubbermaids, but then do you really want to wreck a brand new clear Rubbermaid? I don't know. Kind of, It depends. Depends on what you want to do. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to give it a like, 
hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.